Welcome to Spotlight. And of course, uh, coming up in the next few days, uh, next week, early next week, it's Pancake Day, which is always brilliant, isn't it? Um, always a great excuse. The day after Pancake Day, traditionally we begin uh, the journey of Lent, which is 40 days working up to Easter. And in those 40 days, all over the world, over the last, I don't know, couple of thousand years, Christians have um, gone deeper with Jesus and followed Jesus. And in the footsteps of Jesus, as he went to the cross, they've gone deeper in their hearts with him. We're thinking about going deeper and wider with God this year, so we're choosing to do that in Lent. And these are the kind of things that we're gonna be looking at. Primarily, uh, in all our small groups, we're gonna be using some material uh, that uh, we found from Care for the Family called the Wisdom House. And it's all about relationships, friendships. We're thinking about going deep in relationships with one another. So this is gonna help us to do that. How do we um, get close to one another? How do we find good friendships, good relationships and family at work uh, in our neighborhood? And so we're gonna do that in all our small groups over that I don't know, seven week period and, and beyond if you wanna uh, carry on doing that. There's uh, loads of really great material. To supplement that, to help it, uh, on Sundays for four weeks, we're gonna look at friendships for life. So we're gonna do some teaching on this so it, uh, it helps support what we're gonna be doing all across our small groups. And then for the few weeks leading up to Easter, we'll be thinking of uh, Jesus, as he said to uh, his heavenly father, not my will, but yours be done. How do we know the will of God for our lives? His plan in us and for us and through us. We're gonna look at that until we get to Easter. And then um, sort of some other supplementary things. We're gonna be doing some interviews with people around the church, thinking of wisdom for living, uh, people who have some great experience and can lead us and help us live really well, particularly at this time, and particularly in the inner life, how we manage our emotions, how we manage our thoughts, uh, and how we have a good and healthy mental living. And so uh, we're gonna have some interviews with people, and we're also going to do a series of small acts of worship where musicians and poets and wordsmiths and whoever is going to lead us in uh, brief moments where we find the presence of God, where we can still our hearts, where this journey of Lent, where we're looking for wisdom, we're looking for the will of God, we're looking for healthy relationships, healthy inner lives, where we can find that as we focus on Jesus. So. There's plenty there. Small groups, Sundays, and midweek content. We really hope that together we can journey very, very well up to Easter. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> I have another two tips uh, that I hope will help you look after your mental and emotional health during these rather challenging and really relentlessly going on days. So today we are looking at tip number five, which is find a new rhythm. And rhythm is good, it's good on the dance floor, but it's actually also good in terms of our overall well-being. You see, uh, routine and structure can be a powerful way to regain consistency and to reduce uncertainty. And remember, if we reduce uncertainty, often our anxiety reduces as well. But the reality is that for most of us, our typical day or week now looks very different to the one that we're very familiar with. So how do we deal with that? Well, we need to think about what we still have in our control, said that last week, and then we need to create a routine around it. We need to be intentional. We need to be intentional to include daily activities that are gonna help us feel uh, connected to what we're doing, give us variation and, you know, tick the boxes. So we need to include positive activities like exercise, even if that's exercise from your chair or a little bit of gentle swaying of the hips whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil. Exercise, relaxation, um, prayer can be part of that, worship, listening, reading, creating things, cooking, that can all be part of your relaxation. Hobbies, maybe you've actually got time to, to do something that you, you haven't done for years. You used to play that musical instrument. Perhaps you need to tinkle the old ivories again. And make sure also that you include 
a, a plan and a routine whereby you've arranged to talk to someone. We must keep connected emotionally, even if it's by the phone, on the doorstep, via Zoom. You know the routine. But let's make it a routine. Let's make it a regular event. That would be really good for us. My sixth tip is to stay in the moment. Yeah, or to try and stay in the moment. Restrictions, regulations, the current general situation, it just keeps changing, doesn't it? And, uh, and it's a bit like having shifting sands under your feet if we look to that for our security. So we can't do that. What we need to do is to stay in the moment and to not dwell on the past, what we used to have, how it used to be, and not fixate on the future because that just opens the door to more uncertainty and we can't control that. So we don't get bogged down with what we don't know and what we cannot know. And we concentrate on what we do know here today, what we have control over and that we do our best with today. And that's all we can do. And you know, the Bible really does promote that. It promotes us to be very present minded. It tells us not to worry, not to be anxious. It tells us not to look back um, unless we're learning, but to, to be happy where we're at here in this day. And the things that help us do that are things like the relaxation, the prayer, having um, using an app like Lectio or Bible in a Year or lots of other uh, materials out there just to get into that routine of sitting and being in the moment and being present minded. Walking in nature can help these things. They're little tasks, but actually we build them into our routine. We stay in the moment. Bingo. Really does help. I hope you find that helpful. I hope you give it a try. And I'll be back next week with a couple more tips. Perhaps you've been coming along to Rising Brook for a long time now. You might even remember walking through the doors of one of our buildings for a service on a Sunday or an activity in the week. And that seems a long time ago now, doesn't it? Uh, perhaps you joined up for online church over the last year. Perhaps you joined one of our online small groups because your friend or neighbours invited you. Perhaps you're part of one of our online activities. Whichever door you've walked through into Rising Brook, we just want to say a huge hello and a huge welcome. We're so glad that you're joining with us. Uh, but I'd love to tell you about a course that's starting on February the 23rd on a Tuesday evening. Uh, before three Tuesday evenings, uh, Martin is hosting this. Uh, and it's called Welcome Home. And um, it's a chance for us to look a bit closer at Rising Brook as an organisation, as a church, as a church family. What's our history? How have we got to be where we are? Um, what are our vision? What's our vision for the future? What are our values? What's really important to us as a church community? Um, and you may be thinking about wanting to get in closer as part of our church family. You may want to be thinking about how you can partner with us and join in with our work. You may be thinking about how you can become a member of Rising Brook. Um, if you are, uh, so, or if it's not something you've thought about yet, you know, consider coming on to the Welcome Home course. You can sign up for it by going to risingbrook.org forward slash go and clicking on the Welcome Home tab. You can sign up there, you can pop a comment in the box if you're not sure about the course or if you've got a few questions, you've not quite made your mind up, don't worry, pop them in the box and I, I will get back to you and we can have a chat about that. Uh, don't worry about that. It would be great to see if it's something that you think would be useful for you or something that's really on your heart at the moment. We'd love to spend a Tuesday evening with you, being church together, getting to know a few people and just learning together and focusing on, on what we are about. Um, so I'd love to see you if you want to sign up. This is a quick public service announcement. Your Alpha course needs you, that's right. We have some people signed up for our Alpha course, which we've had to postpone until after half term. So there's still plenty of time for you to get your friends along to do it, but it needs your help. I need you to think of anybody that you can think of that might be remotely interested in joining an Alpha course. And I appreciate it's kind of tricky to say, hey, come and do this kind of Christian thing that you might not have been interested in massively before. Um, and it's a bit awkward, but we want to make it easy as possible. There's some great, great, great video content out there to promote this stuff, to start 
giving the questions to people that they might not have even considered as to why they might do the Alpha course. So if you go to risingbrook.org forward slash go and click on the Alpha link, then you can watch a video and that's where you can send people to to sign up and that's where they can be signposted to get excited about this thing that maybe they'd never thought about before but might actually be life changing and save their life eternally. Um, not to put too fine a point on it. So if that is something that you're interested in doing in promoting the kingdom in that way, then please do just get the link and then send it out to people and say, hey, look, there's a new course starting. Do you know what brings the most traction to our courses is if you do the course with the person. So it would be amazing if a whole bunch of people that we knew who were watching this spotlight video that are members of Rising Brook family community were to invite a friend of theirs to come along to join in with them and do it. It's a whole bunch of fun. It'll be fun on the Zoom call. It'll make it far less intimidating. It's way less intimidating than it used to be anyway because you don't even have to go anywhere. You can sit in your house, in your pants if you like, with some snacks, with a drink, and you can just meet some new people in a really non-threatening environment watch some videos, talk about it, share your opinion. It's all good. So, action points. Get the link, send it to a friend, be really lovely, invite them along, join them, and hopefully we'll see you on our course after half term. It's gonna be great. Hi everyone. In each of the elders' spots in Spotlight that I've done, I've tried to pinpoint a phrase which we can take hold of. I'm very aware of the struggles that so many people are going through at the moment which is different for every single person. And in wondering what to say this week, I was drawn to the invitation Jesus gave us in Matthew eleven twenty eight: Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What does he mean by come to me? I always see him standing there, arms open wide in welcome, saying, talk to me, tell me about it, give me your worries and stresses. I'll take the weight of them for you or in the words of the songwriter, Faithful one, so unchanging. Angelist one, you're my rock of peace. Lord of all, I depend on you. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm, your love is the anchor. My hope is in you alone. Let's pray. Jesus, you invite us to come to you each day with the things which really feel heavy and your promise is, I will give you rest. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for all those who are feeling weary and burdened at the moment that they will be able to come to you and receive that promised rest. May they feel your rest, your comfort and your strength. Amen. <laughs>